Hello and welcome back everyone to the next episode on Anubhav Learning Series with AnubhavTrainings.com. In this series of videos, we are learning about how to build an end-to-end -end SAP BTP Cloud Fury application on top of an integration API built using SAP CPI integration suite. By far in this series of videos, we have learned about accessing our CPI based API which is consuming an ERP BAPI using a SOAP service, transforming that to a JSON response and understanding our use case. Then in the next episode, I showed you how to create a destination to a protected CPI API using SAP BTP cockpit. In the third episode, we started our development with Business Application Studio and by far we created a app router multi-target application and we deployed the same on SAP BTP Cloud Foundry. In our today's episode, we are going to learn how to build a Fury application utilizing the API and consuming and testing it locally. In subsequent episodes, I will show you deploying the same application to SAP BTP Cloud Foundry. So let's get started. So I'll switch over back and first I'll explain you what we plan to do today. By far you saw that we have a integration suite service subscription and here we have an integration flow which was created in the past by integration expert in our company. This flow returns an API at the end of the day and we have created a connection in SAP BTP account for this particular API. So we have created a connection and we are calling that ultimately to load the data. This is what we are by far doing it. Cool. So once we get the data ultimately, we are then going to use that in the sub account and we are going to create an app. So by far, we have created an app router. Let me show you the app router endpoint. So in our Fury application or in our application, multi-target application, we given an endpoint for app router without any security, pointing to slash HTTP and calling our destination. In the last episode, I deployed the app router and it got deployed successfully. And now you can see my app router is running in the PTP account. I go inside the app router and I will copy the app router URL. And now I'll try to access my integration API through the app router, which internally uses this destination. So let's switch over back to the Postman tool. And here, instead of putting the entire URL of our direct CPI endpoint, we will put the URL of our app router to test if app router is able to route our request through the destination to our CPI API. I click on send. And voila, you can see the response is coming back, which is a clear evidence that app router is now ready and it is able to call the external API, which is in my another sub account built using integration suite. So our next step is to add a UI module, a Fury application. We will be going with the freestyle Fury application. You can already notice that in app router, I have put in an endpoint to basically uh, authenticate and uh, call HTML5 runtime, repo runtime service, which will then return the Fury application back again to us when we deploy our app. Now, during the BAS tool creation of the app, we do not need any app router for testing purpose because we can use the UI5 tooling for the same. So what I will do now is right click on MTA YAML, create a MTA module from template, and we will create a Fury application at this time. So we create a Fury app. We click on next button and then I will choose a Fury application of type basic as I'm planning to create a freestyle Fury app. Right now we will choose no data source because at the moment I cannot use the data source destination because it is not a destination data source powered by your data. So we cannot use our destination directly because our API which we had built is a REST API. Yes, so we choose new 
and click on next we give the view name main view and let's give a project name which we will be generating anubhav cpi app dash ui so anubhav cpi app dash ui and let's add here the application title my Pure UI to communicate to CPI. Let's give a namespace. I can give com.anubhav.cpi and we will be creating it inside the project itself as a UI module. And I say I would like to also add a deployment configuration to VTP, which is good. Please inculcate the changes in many MTA YAML and also add a launchpad configuration. So click on next button. We add deploy configuration now to SAP BTP Cloud Foundry. This application will ultimately be deployed in BTP account. So that time, at the time of deployment, it should use my integration suite destination. I click on next button and now we will give the Fury Launchpad configuration for the app. So let me call it as Anubhav CPI call and I say Anubhav Puri app for CPI integration. Give a subtitle anubhavtrainings.com and click on finish. So now it is generating the Fury application for us and in just few minutes we, we should be able to see this Fury application created on the UI. 346 minutes later. So now our app is generated. Let's look at the MTA YAML first. And this time what you find is we have got a also a UI module which is of type HTML5 module ultimately go and deploy in HTML5 repository inside the inside the Cloud Foundry environment and we've got all the required resources as well so as part of our next step what we are going to do we are going to add the business logic to trigger the call so first I need to test my application locally to be able to do that, we go to UFI YAML file and here we will attach a backend with Fury tool proxy. And this backend, what we will be doing, we will be basically calling our uh, our destination service. So we say my backend, any call to slash HTTP from my app will ultimately go to my destination. So what's my destination name? Let me grab that. So this will be for local test testing in the BAS tool. So I'm going to come back and put my destination name here so that all the calls will be sent to this destination uh, ultimately to the URL. So you never ever ever hard code your endpoint URL in your in your Fury app. Always use destination. And now we will write the logic. So let me go ahead and create a view. And in the view we will be adding a button. So let me add a button. So I will create a content aggregation for the page. Yes, and then we will be adding the content inside. So I will go ahead and add a button control. So button, let's say uh, with the text of the button, let's say Anubhav data fetch and press on fetch so that we can fetch the data with an icon. I can say SAP-icon colon iPhone. Yes, I can put also the tooltip if I want and then I will add a list control. And with this list control, we will add the binding for the list control. So that's also we will be doing. So let's add a binding for item segregation or the list control and we will bind with local data model so I will be creating a local data model and let me go the response type what is coming in the postman we will bind with this item array and inside this we will create every list item is of type let's say standard list item or let's say uh, object list item and then we will add title uh, intro number and number unit these are the properties so we will bind with the uh, mandate as intro 
this is the relative path and we will find here the title with this number sorry the property name so what's my property name is this one and i will also add the title next to this we'll add the auto ray this property so whatever this data is there we will just binding the relative address of that data with our local model okay cool so you can see here it cannot have a empty id attribute so it's a good practice to always use an id attribute so id btn and i will also give id list yeah okay so now what we do as a next step is the flex is enabled so we need to disable the flex setting in the manifest so that this issue will go away and i will make it false and let me also create a model a default model which will store all the incoming data from the from the service so let me just go and define a model now we will be creating a json model as a default model at an application level perfect so this model gets created ultimately and we should be storing our data temporarily in that model fantastic so that is our view and of course on fetch button we will write the logic inside the controller and let me just write uh, over here function and in this i will be writing all the logic to get the data from my backend system so to be able to get the data from the backend system we will be utilizing the ajax call because it's a plain rest api so what i will be doing is i will be creating a ajax call over here and this will be using jquery so you know the ui5 is built on top of jquery we will make a ajax call to our endpoint that is what we have got from the cpi consultant and then the header will be application json we will have data type as json asynchronous true data as a payload so we have to also pass this payload which is pointing to the exact payload which we are passing in the postman for testing so i go to postman tool and use the same payload over here and then stringify the payload and once the callback is successful we will use the model so let me get the model object this dot get owner component dot get model we will also say var that equal to this so that we can access the controller object inside the callback and then we are actually setting our items uh, node in the data model pointing to this node because you see the response comes with this node under that node we have the child node as a ct libri and that is what we are setting to our model as a result once the data comes in the model it is available globally as a default model the data will appear on the ui as well cool so here during the local testing we are also end up using the destination to cross check and test that our destination is working fine so that is what uh, ultimately we are doing with the ui fi yaml file during the bas testing process all right all looks good hopefully the app should run fine now in the local bas studio so i start my application using uff tooling in the business application studio for the testing purpose and later on once the testing is complete we will begin to deploy our application to btp cloud foundry okay so allow the pop up and launch the application access the application and the application will now use for time being the destination and the destination will load the data from the from the api from the integration suite api so let it launch the application yeah one long angry line later in the meanwhile the application boots up uh, let me show you what's going on here if you check that it is now using the UI5 
Fury Tools proxy, you can see backend proxy created for our destination to point for HTTP calls. So now I'll switch over back, refresh and watch out. I click the button and voila, there you go. You can see all the application is running and it's able to show all the data to us. Fantastic. That's our application and it is fully ready. Kindly check the description of this video where I have already updated the source code of this application which you can use, download and then adapt it according to the need of your company. If you are also having a very same use case to consume integration API. So our next step, we will deploy this application into SAP BTP Cloud Foundry and consume the data with the with the CPI of course and this will be a fully ready cloud application powered by App Router. All right, thank you so much once again for joining this episode with me on anuboutrainings.com. For in more interesting videos like this, please like, share and subscribe this channel. Kindly subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be notified for free content like this in the future. Please do share this channel in the WhatsApp group or over the email with your colleagues so they can also take advantage of this free content with anuboutrainings.com. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Anubhav signing out. Have a nice day and goodbye.